So the uh, gamut of experiences, I mean, there is a gamut of experiences. It runs across um, the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. And typically, um, there is a general narrative that, I, that I've seen that sort of runs across the experiences for African-American children and adults. And this is as a result of their experiences in school, and there's experiences out of school as well, but as a result of their experiences in school, there tends to be um, a variety and set of experiences that socializes uh, black learners out of mathematics. And as you begin to try to understand these experiences, they come across in narrative form. And you have adults who, I've interviewed adults as old as 55, 60 years old, who go back many, many, many years across several genera couple generations, who talk about um, sitting in math classes, being given explicit messages that math wasn't for them, that they should go on and become, at that time, um, bus drivers, nurses, butlers, you know, whatever the case may be. More contemporarily, um, you get African American learners who talk about, uh, you know, the stereotypes and perceptions that are sort of foisted on them by classmates, by teachers, um, that black people don't do math. And um, as I said, these experiences occur across school context and also outside of school. So this actually happens within some community context as well. So that's on one sort of end of the spectrum in terms of these negative experiences and negative storylines that get generated about mathematical experiences. But the other aspect I'm even more excited about and I spend um, more of my time focusing on because I don't think we should focus only on failure and um, limited success in mathematics. So a number of us have been studying successful learners and looking at issues of socialization. And what is it that successful learners um, do and say about their mathematical experiences? And these successful learners talk about an, a range of um, sort of factors that come to play in how they maintain, achieve and maintain their success. So it could range from family factors. My mother was not going to stand for me not being able to get into the algebra class. And me seeing my mother do that um, propelled me to want to do well. Um, I looked at my peers and I saw that a lot of my peers were not doing this, this, and this, or they were doing this, this, and this in negative ways. I didn't want to be like my peers. Um, in some other cases, I formed peer groups where all of us were interested in mathematics and we wanted to be high achievers. Um, in other cases, in terms of these experiences and identities, people just love the mathematics. Um, I remember and recall some middle school students, one middle school in particular, stu student in particular, I'll never forget her. She was an accelerated African-American uh, young girl. I believe she was in eighth, eighth grade and she was taking at the middle school that was grade seven, eight, nine. She was, as an eighth grader, enrolled in the ninth grade math class, which was accelerated geometry. So the following year, she would have to go, when she was a ninth grader, she would have to leave the campus and go to high school and take her math class and then come back to the middle school. And her sort of sense of self and the discipline and her math identity and her experiences had led her to just sort of fall in love with the mathematics. So the beauty of studying socialization is that you get beyond just the outcomes and the test scores and you begin to understand the range and variety of experiences that black children, black learners have.